connected. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and short this out. Oh man, I just don't wanna do it. Today we're gonna to be powering my gas furnace using the Anchor Solix F2000 power station in combination with this 120 volt transfer switch. Now you could also power any of the other 120 volt circuits in your house, so you don't have to necessarily connect it to your gas furnace, but that's what we're going to do. At the end of the video, we're gonna go through and do a capacity test on this unit and see out of the 2048 watt hours, what efficiency we're able to get when we drain that down to 0%. And then also an efficiency on the charge side of it. It's got wheels right here, as well as a handle that pops out on this side. It has a light on the front right here, which is actually kind of a nice amber color. This thing is able to output 2400 watts continuous. We have four 20 amp, 120 volt receptacles right here, as well as a TT30R port, which is standard for your RV. This thing should be able to handle most RV air conditioners, which is really, really useful. It's kind of the perfect size of battery to take along. We also have two car sockets right here, three USB type C ports, two USB A. Uh, you can connect it to the app with the Bluetooth button right there, and you can cycle the display on and off. Coming around the backside right here, this is where our inputs are. This is a little magnetic door. We've got our solar input right there. We can take up to a thousand watts or right here on the grid side, we can take up to 1,440 watts. Down here is a port that allows us to expand and add additional batteries. When this thing is fully charged, it holds about two kilowatt hours of electricity and it can go from zero to 80% in about an hour, which is pretty fantastic. I was curious though, how much does two kilowatts of electricity cost in your region? Uh, here where we are, it's about 15 cents a kilowatt hour, especially if you figure in like delivery charges and stuff like that. So this thing holds about 30 cents worth of electricity, which is just kind of an interesting metric to think about. So yeah, comment down below how much does electricity cost where you're from. Anchor has a five year warranty on this thing and it's designed to be used every day for up to 10 years with really no concerns of significant degradation of the cells inside of this thing because it's using lithium iron phosphate automotive grade batteries inside which are rated for 3000 charge and discharge cycles. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing connected to our furnace. Almost all power stations are going to be floating neutral. And what that means is that the ground and the neutral are not going to be connected together. And we can tell that by switching into continuity mode with an electrical tester. When I cross these, it makes a beeping noise. So if we go from the wider slot right here to the ground prong, there shouldn't be any continuity and there is not. So that means that this is a floating neutral power station. And honestly, it seems like uh, the majority of small generators and uh, power stations are typically going to be floating neutral. And so what we're going to do is since we do have a floating neutral, we actually have to change how this switch is set up just a little bit by taking the neutral uh, wires off of the switch right here. And instead of having this pigtail, we're going to connect this directly to the neutral bus inside of our panel. Always make sure you disconnect the power from your panel when you're working in it. The installation process of this transfer switch is too lengthy to cover in this particular video, but if you would like to see the detailed installation and the different things you need to keep in mind during this process, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because that should be coming out in the next couple of weeks. There we have it. Let's go ahead and turn our circuit breaker on to the easy generator box. And then right down here, we should be able to switch it into normal mode and it should right away connect our furnace. Yep, and it started just like I expected it to. So we are officially ready to connect our power station to our inlet box here, right here. This is gonna be super cool. All right, all we have to do is connect our extension cord now to the power station and take the other end and plug that into our easy generator box and then flip it into generator mode. And I did hear a click right away. That's a good sign. Right now you can save up to $1,200 on Anchor Solix products and bundles. So be sure to check that link right at the top of the description. There we go, 19 watts, 27 watts. It's working, you guys. We are running on battery power for the furnace right now through our generator switch. I'll give you an update in a little bit. We're just gonna leave it hooked up and see if everything works properly. I definitely should put a cover on the panel though now that we have it turned on again, huh? 
<laughs> As you can see right now, our temperature outside is 30 degrees and we've been running on the Anchor Solix F2000 for about 15 hours now. And you can see that we're still at 35% remaining in the battery. My furnace has two stages, a low stage and a high stage. So when it is in low stage, you can see right now we're drawing about 400 watts and we'd be able to operate continuously for four and a half hours. Now in a few minutes it should kick up to the higher stage and I'll show you guys how long it would operate on that. It just kicked up into high fire and you can see we're pulling 863 watts so it will be able to run about two hours at full fire. You're only going to run your furnace for a little bit at a time so even though it's only two hours of runtime right now that's actually a significant amount of heat that we're going to be able to get. Now let's test out the UPS function and that is where we're going to be outputting power here. You can see down in the corner we're still connected to our transfer switch and we're still powering the furnace at this very second. Uh, but at the same time we're going to go ahead and start recharging the battery. Now this could be coming from a generator or any other power source. So let's go ahead and plug this in. I don't think it should even interrupt power to the furnace at all when we do so. We're con connected. This is actually a really interesting opportunity to understand shared neutrals and connecting multiple neutrals from different circuits. Basically what's happening is that since we're outputting... Okay guys, something interesting just happened. I just got a little tingle here from this plug and that's actually super weird. Um, uh, Let's test this, but let me, I guess I'll, we'll test this in a second, but let me finish talking about what I was going to say. Okay, this is actually a really unique uh, learning opportunity about shared neutrals, and it's something that smart breakers are able to detect. Basically, if we have a loop of wire, or if we share a neutral from two different circuits in one of our electrical boxes, it's going to cause that particular breaker to trip, which is actually a really good thing because you do not want to have any neutrals shared from multiple different circuits. And since we are currently outputting right here, into our furnace circuit and that neutral from this box is connected to our neutral bus. As soon as I connect power to this, it connects to our power station and causes that circuit to trip because this is gonna start passing power through from this circuit, which is connecting into here, which has a neutral that goes back to the neutral bus, effectively creating two paths for neutral current to flow on, which is not something that you ever wanna have. So if we connect to a generator instead of to a cord that's coming from the same source, uh, we should have no issues at all. And that's a more accurate representation of what you'd actually be doing in a power outage scenario. So uh, I'm gonna go connect this to a gas generator now, and we should be able to go ahead and charge while using our furnace at the same time. But first, let's measure the current on this thing because this is really weird. You can see right here, we are connected to our grid input. We've got our tester set to volts alternating current. We'll go ahead and see what this thing says. We're gonna test from the hot to the ground. 76 volts right there. That's what I was feeling. So it's not a full 120, but that's actually a pretty uh, high voltage to just be sitting there passively on those, on those prongs. That's super weird. We're gonna check from the hot to the neutral now that we have eight volts there. The neutral to the ground, we also have 76 volts. Uh, I wonder what happens if we short it out. Hmm, is that a bad idea? Probably is, but let's do it anyway. Oh goodness, I do not want to do this. All right, here's the Knipex Twin Grips. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and short this out. This is a great gift idea. If you guys are interested, you can pick one of these up to support these sort of shenanigans. Oh man, I just don't want to do it. All right, here we go. Okay, nothing happened. Right now, all of these are shorted out. So it's obviously not a catastrophic problem. It's just like some voltage coming through, but not very much amperage. And when you short this out, it doesn't do anything. No voltage there. No voltage there, because we're shorted out to the twin grips right now. 
Now let's just move the twin grips over to the cord here. 75 volts again. 75 volts on that side as well. Ouch. Like I can feel it. Ow, man. Probably not a good idea to touch those. Okay, that's a, that's a problem. Let's go start up our generator and uh, and still do our UPS function test, but that's a little bit interesting. I'm gonna see what they have to say about that. Anchor got back to me on this voltage issue and I'm actually really impressed with what they had to say. Uh, mostly because they didn't try to make me take this out of the video because I kind of was wondering if the whole getting shocked by this cord was going to be something that they were going to be like, hey, can you take that out? Probably, you know, it's not needed. But no, they came back and explained it. This is what they said. And you guys can comment down below and let me know exactly what you think about it. Uh, it does seem weird still that there's voltage on these, but this is what they said specifically. They said, this is the current generated by the voltage division of the safety capacitor, which is less than the safe current for the human body and complies with safety standards. And it does seem to be the case that, you know, obviously when we shorted that out, we weren't really having any uh, issues with any sort of arcing. The amount of current there, as in like the amount of actual electricity that was passing through from that voltage, seems to be extremely minimal. But comment down below if you understand what that means. I'm not an expert in understanding what uh, safety capacitors do exactly so either way i appreciate that they got back to me and they had a very specific answer and they didn't request that we remove this from the video at all so i'm pretty confident that it's not really a big concern We now have our power source coming from our gas generator outside. You can see we're still connected to the grid input on the back of the Anchor Solix F2000. Let's see what happens here. I can hear the generator ramping up a little bit outside. This is working exactly as I had hoped it would, where we are inputting 1400 watts and simultaneously outputting 155 watts to the furnace fan right now. And the super cool thing is that we only have to run our generator for a couple of hours to top this thing off. 1.3 hours is what it's saying right now to go from 25% up to 100%, which allows us to only have to run our generator for a couple hours every day instead of having to run it for 24 hours a day in a grid down situation. All right, we're gonna begin our capacity test. And then we're gonna go ahead and just reset our energy monitor here. Our total capacity on this thing is 2,048 watt hours, which is very close to two kilowatt hours. Now, typically you have about a 10% efficiency loss. So my expectations for this test is that we're gonna end at about 1.8 kilowatt hours. There it goes. 1.825 kilowatt hours was our final amount. That is fantastic. That, that exceeded my expectations. But what we're gonna do now is go ahead and reset this monitor again. And we are gonna do the test once again, except for now we are going to be charging the unit instead of discharging. We just hit 100% and the final amount that we used was 2.3 kilowatt hours. Listen to how quiet this thing operates. Right now it's charging at close to its peak wattage. I'm not changing the audio levels at all on this. A 120 volt transfer switch like this is perfect for the situation that we're talking about today with powering your furnace. But if you guys wanna see how to connect a solar generator or a regular generator to your entire property, click on this video right here where we're gonna go through the process of installing an inlet box and an interlocked breaker, which allow you to do that super easily. And this video right down here is gonna cover the Anchor Solix F3800, which is actually this power station right down underneath this one that is able to output 240 volts and we can power the entire house and panel with that. So super interesting stuff. Thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you.
right over there. I think it's about to run out of gas. <laughs> no way.